Chris, a specialist pain nurse, Lawrence, an anaesthetic registrar, and Tammy, a medical student, are on the daily acute pain team ward round. They have just seen a patient who had a total knee replacement. Yes, surgeons are always keen to get their patients up and moving quickly, so a lot of epidurals are out the next day. Why do we use epidurals at all then? Well, they actually help to decrease the amount of post-op analgesia that you're going to need. Mm -hmm. um, they actually form part of our multimodal analgesic strategy that we have. Multimodal strategy? If you imagine, pain is felt through a number of different mechanisms and uh, what we try and do is combine different analgesics to, to control the pain better. Pain is sensed by a variety of different pain receptors, called nociceptors. Each analgesic works on specific pain mechanisms to have an effect. Multimodal analgesia uses analgesics with different mechanisms of action, blocking pain from different angles, aiming to be more effective than using a single mode of pain relief. The medications work together, resulting in smaller doses of each. Avoiding high doses can help to decrease the likelihood of side effects. So it's like a battle against the patient's pain. We have to use all the weapons we have available. I suppose you could do it that way. Carla is an orthopaedics registrar with a special interest in joint surgery. She has an idea to discuss with the pain team. So, Chris, you've been to see Mr. Thompson, the patient who had the knee replacement surgery? That's right. I know you wanted to get the epidural out, so we've started him on some regular painkillers. Great. Thank you so very much. Now, I've been thinking, where last work, we did something called accelerated recovery program. That's for patients who don't really have complications in their joint replacement surgery. Do you think we could do something like that here with the pain team? Yeah, I've been meaning to look into that. We were just talking about the idea of using... Uh, uh, multimodal analgesia, so that's a perfect example. Good. Um, I used to do the local anaesthetics infiltration intraoperatively. Could do, but let's just start with the WHO analgesic ladder first, so we don't miss anything. Okay. okay. So, step one, paracetamol. Yep. So, regular paracetamol uh, with a non steroidal anti inflammatory drug, uh, obviously, assuming no contraindications. They'll need morphine, won't they? Why bother with paracetamol? Well, interestingly, using step one analgesic drugs does help to reduce the uh, dosage of your stronger painkillers. It's called opioid sparing. Um, we know paracetamol is a very effective drug. We know that it doesn't have many side effects, so why not use it? In 1986, the World Health Organization devised an analgesic ladder as a guide for treating cancer pain. It now forms a basis for all pain management. It encourages you to assess the severity of the pain, admin ad administer analgesics, and then reassess. It also encourages movement up and down the ladder, depending on the assessment. Step one are the simple analgesics. These include paracetamol and all non-steroidals. COX-2 inhibitors also fit into this group. A recent literature review showed that by combining paracetamol with non-steroidals, it reduces the pain intensity by 35% compared with using either drug alone. It also did not show any evidence of increased incidence of side effects compared with using either drug alone. We should definitely therefore be using a combination of step one medications wherever possible. So step two are the weak opioids like codeine and step three is morphine, right? I thought we used to give them tramadol. Joint replacement surgery is painful and tramadol is not enough immediately post-operatively. We need to be giving step three analgesics regularly. Mm -hmm. mm. We should also be prescribing as required medication for any breakthrough pains. Mm -hmm. Okay. Step 2 analgesics in the WHO analgesic ladder are the weak opioids. Codeine and hydrocodeine belong in this group. Examples of Step 3 strong opioids are morphine, oxycodone and fentanyl. These drugs are used instead of Step 2 when higher powered pain control is needed. What about infiltration of local anaesthetics around the joint during the operation? Mm, that's great for additional pain relief when you don't have an epidural or an individual nerve block mm. that may compromise early mobility. Mm, and it's something we or surgeons could do ourselves. Mm, excellent. Mm -hmm. What about adding something like gabapentin to our cocktail? Isn't that for chronic pain? It's a useful painkiller and one of the many adjuncts to work synergistically with other drugs in a pain relief strategy. Tramadol has been added later as an intermediate between step two and three. It's stronger than the step two analgesics and also has added action on other receptors. Nowadays, some clinicians add step four onto the WHO ladder.
to acknowledge the adjuncts that can be given along with traditional analgesics. These include antidepressants, anticonvulsants, local anaesthetics, and interventions such as nerve blocks. This is great. Well, what we need to do is we need to, uh, with, we need to document well the protocol and carefully pick the patients that, we, that, that we're going to give this to. Um, how about some training sessions? Mm. Uh, maybe some patient leaflets? Uh, we have to try and reduce the chances of any drug interactions or medication errors. Excellent. Um, I've got to go now, but I will email you guys a copy of the outline we did today. Cool? Fantastic. Take care, guys. Be well. Multimodal analgesia aims to improve the patient's pain management by using different types of analgesics to act on different pain receptors. The World Health Organization Analgesic Ladder gives a framework to this concept. This strategy is more effective than using a single agent and often allows the use of lower opioid doses, helping to minimize dose-related side effects. Prescribers should be aware of the added risk of drug interactions and human errors with an increased number of prescribed medications. Good education of health professionals and patients should help to minimize this risk.